Hello everyone, and welcome back to This Week in Guns, brought to you by Patriot Patch Company, VZ Griffs, MAF Corporation for Patriots Food, and Primary Arms. This show, back in the saddle again, offers commentary on the latest firearms industry news, information, and buzz. I'm your host, Matthew Rosier, and I'm joined today by my co-host, who I think may need more bullets. Please, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I need more bullets, sir. <laughs> bigger weapons, sir. You, you, you need bigger weapons. So the uh, the uh, one issue that people have brought out is that this show, like one of the reasons we're not more successful is that it's self-referential and packed with inside jokes. And as we just did that, I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, we will make it worse at your own expense. At our own expense. Um, Take my at protein, everyone's expense. sir. But uh, yeah, uh, no, no. Tell me in the comments: is that a problem? Are we too self-referential? Should we explain every joke we make? Uh, or because how do you? I don't know. I don't feel like I have the type You'd of be comedy boring that... like the other shows. You just be like deadpan boring, and it's like, ha ha, the liberals, right? <laughs> yeah, like the depth of the joke that you're allowed to make is like liberals. Am I right? Like, like ha ha, liberals and uh haha ak reliable like what <laughs> <laughs> and that's it haha <laughs> two world wars i think that's the depth like that's the depth yeah but anyway uh do, do let us know though because we value your input we'll uh, read it and if you agree with us then good and if you disagree we'll say fuck you yeah. if you agree with us we may incorporate your suggestion into the thing we were already gonna do <laughs> um <laughs> But so I guess just some some personal updates on us. Um, not so personal. So as a lot of you guys knew, I, I was representing am representing Matthew Hoover in the auto key card case. Uh, we had sentencing, which was a nightmare, but we did argue very hard to get him a less insane sentence than what the government was going for. Now that we have a cold record, um, you know, now that the lower court case is closed, I'm more able to talk about it. And I mean, it's a doozy. It, it's I kind of want to like part of me wants to just let loose. Uh, this, this whole episode could just be a uh, you know, what went on behind the scenes because yeah, I don't think I don't think everybody's fully appreciative, and of course, I wasn't even really fully understanding of what all goes into this stuff but he won't brag for himself but i will uh, this man put in a lot like a lot of work behind the scenes to you know of course matt hoover got a shit deal at the end of the day right he's in, mm -hmm. he's in jail and it, it really does suck because he didn't do anything wrong he was in jail for at absolute worst at absolute worst and we assume these are machine guns which they aren't but even if we agree they are he's in jail for advertising them not sell, actually selling them. Right? He didn't make them. He didn't sell them. He never mm -hmm. touched them. So it's it's just goof goofball stuff. But uh, thanks to our friend Matt, the lawyer Matt, uh, the, the things could have been so much worse for him. And I, I know everybody's easy, you know, great at the Monday night quarterbacking thing. And you should have done this, and you should have done that. And well, if I was the lawyer, I would have done this. But uh, it's it's important to understand that you know, the feds were trying to angle for somewhere between 20 and 40 years in right. jail for advertising a drawing. And that, by the way, they've succeeded in other cases that are similar. Right. Uh, they've succeeded in doing that. Uh, we put on a hell of an argument at sentencing. Um, there, there are some things there I can't tell you, but I got some good comments from some, you know, some good support from some unexpected locations. Uh, and my whole goal is just to get Matt back to his family. Uh, that's, that's really all I want. It does, it, it does pain me a lot reading the comments of people who, you know, insinuate that I did something wrong or, um, whatever. I, look, I'm sure there's things that I could have done better just because no one's perfect, but it, it, you guys have to remember, I was not the only lawyer on this. I was not like there was no less than five lawyers that I was conferring with and actively working with every step of the way to get the best shake. And my favorite one that it just really pisses me off. And people think, you know, they tell me this, like they're holding four aces and they ask, why didn't you ha bring character witnesses 
at trial. I think now that the transcripts are available, people will see it's because the only the only thing a character witness could stand to do is be impeached by the prosecution. Yes. The only way a character witness would go any direction is they end up being used against you. Right. And yeah. so we succeeded. And basically, there was a lot of we had people that we could have called. And the game time decision was not to. And that was not my decision. That was me, my client, and the four or five other lawyers that we were working with every single day to try to get the best result. Um, and honestly, if, if you read through the transcripts, uh, there, there's there's nothing better that could have been done. And this really comes down to a thing where it, anyway, the it, facts in this case are really good for appeal. Uh, so uh, all I do is look at appellate gun cases. And so I always see, oh, they didn't preserve this. They didn't preserve this. They didn't preserve that. So we made sure everything was preserved for appeal in the best way we possibly could. So I'm very hopeful for the appeal because guess what? It's... Uh, I, I don't think it's supportable that a, a homogenous piece of steel can be considered to be a combination of parts. The facts in the it's case are really good. They're, they're yeah. really good. And you know, the, the, I mean, the, the questions of fact are good. And the questions of law, I think, are even better, which is usually usually you got that the other way around where you right. have okay facts, but the law isn't really on your side. and You've got to argue facts against law. It's tough. And this but is what got, pissed me oh, off about the other how the other people have covered this case. Uh, because first of all, uh, no, I'll call you out. I'm gonna call him out. Hey guys, editor Matt here. My uh, PR team was successful in convincing me not to call out these other gun tubers by name. However, they were not successful in convincing me not to use their channel names as prompts for my AI image generator. So there's that. All of you motherfuckers had my phone number. All of you could have called me. And you just went talking about clickbait nonsense. That did not was, reflect what was going there, on. There was some stuff some of those commentators did, got that was right, but there was a lot of stuff where they were just making pure conjecture that their audience Yeah, but it, it was like it was fact. so frustrating because they have my number. Right. Why? And they know because they're attorneys. They know that there are certain things that I couldn't say, but that I could have communicated to get the story straight. And they didn't because what GunTube is about for most of these people is getting quick nickels. They put as little thought as they can into reporting on something just and and all I think they spent most of their time thinking about the headline. Uh, yeah. And it's it's infuriating because and Matt Hoover, man, what a what a guy never broke spirit. He's in great spirits now. We've got a plan for the appeals. It's going to go good. Um, he never broke his stride. But the thing that they never prepare you for is when I had to bring his his effects right back to his family and his little girl looked up at me and you know just said i miss daddy like that damages you from the inside out um and it, it's it's I, i'll openly admit it was really not helpful to then come back and have a, a series of non-jd monday morning quarterbacks telling me um how I'm responsible, how I fucked this up. Well, you should have got a character witness. That would have, that would have, that would have, yeah, you, you know, should have, the, the you jury would have done one Bruin character motion. witness. Yeah, you should have do, done a, do a Bruin. Yeah, do a Bruin. Yeah, file a Bruin. It's like, okay. By the way, I've tracked this. I wrote, I believe, the first incantation of Bruin in a criminal case. Because Bruin was decided while all this was happening. Right. My bre my motion there has been used almost verbatim in dozens of cases after that. I really feel like I did my best, and uh, you you really did do yeah. everything you not only that you could be expected to, but what you could physically do, and it really came down to a I mean just a bad combination of a whoa okay I'm cutting that out. <laughs> um, Leaving so we've the question got a lot of what of, is a machine gun up to the jury was just a strange will, will always be a strange call to me because that's a question of law. It's a question of law, not a fact, right? And, and the jury it, doesn't get to answer those. I I agree. And so all of these things that will will be we have multiple great avenues for appeal. Right. Any, any remember, one of these I think on is great, right? Yeah. Any one of these is a great appeal on its own. Just yeah. like ha having having a panel of judges review 
is is the definition of machine gun something the jury gets to decide because i don't think so a super fascinating part of this and a lot of you guys might not be aware of this because the only reporting you've been able to get on it was dog shit uh the the government took a statute which was disjunctive right it has multiple different definitions of machine gun and they intentionally charged one sub definition they intentionally right because the auto key card was a single physical thing i know it because i held it it wasn't like a thing where you can pop it out or whatever they could have said it is either this or that they could have said it's either a single part design intended solely and exclusively blah 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 or a combination of parts but they didn't do that they specified they exclusively charged a combination of parts which and every element of that a combination of parts designed and intended in converting a weapon into a machine gun you I have to get can, i don't think they can get past step one maybe in step two certainly stops them <laughs> so sometimes juries will decide that you know uh, th there was a case where a jury decided that somebody had stolen a hundred dollar bill but was not guilty of the aggravator because they determined that the the value of the hundred dollar bill was not one hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. like the juries come up with all kinds of things and that's why you can appeal from a jury verdict right i i do feel sore about how everything is has gone on with this like a lot of people have tried to get their 15 minutes based off of what happened to matt and it's like there's a family right now that is that does not have their breadwinner because of the government aggressively misinterpreting and misapplying a statute. If you want to help, send money to Erica Hoover, please. Don't give it to any three-letter organizations that provided no aid whatsoever. Um, and they really don't do that in criminal cases. Uh, yeah. It's not convenient for them. It, and it doesn't make them money. Send money to Erica Hoover, please. I, if you if you want to send money to me, you can. But I, I'm going to tell you guys, I told Matt that no matter what happened, I would be with him through the end. There's no like, you know, there's <laughs> there's no oh you're out of money. Sorry, Charlie. Right. Um, this is. It could have been any of us, right? Yeah. If if this happened to him. It could be anyone because if that thing can be a machine gun on the basis of it could be cut out and converted through yeah. some amount of trial and tribulation then what there could not it'd be I, honestly it's the last <laughs> work to convert an ak it's oh it was funny i i did uh get into a fight that i won't reveal but there was a point where we were talking about framing all of the the underlying things that happened <laughs> and i was insisting on uh on including the details right because in one of the videos matt had talked about how uh, drilling the third hole what he was talking about doing sot conversions of drilling the third hole and i specifically said which means drilling a five thirty seconds hole <laughs> uh, I think it's what 0. 0.2 inches from the top deck. <laughs> it's 123 off the top deck, 125 yeah. diameter hole. Yeah, yeah. Um, center line above the safety selector. Center line, yeah, center line above the safety selector. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I remember we would put that, and they were like, they were, I did not want that on there. I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> why? What's the big deal? It's just yeah. words. It's just words. Yeah. Because um, obviously, I mean, everybody out there who's watching this, they know just how effed up the situation is. So the next step is the 11th circuit. The 11th circuit is showing some good, some good things, right? Um, th the 11th circuit did give us cause to be concerned when they found in favor of the state of Florida in the 18 to 21 bands by literally citing slave codes. Uh, 
but that has been vacated and a, a rehearing is going on in the Bondi case in Bach. So that does indicate that the 11th Circuit is like, oops, maybe we should actually apply the Second Amendment to these cases. But so I guess the update for you guys, Matt is doing good. Like he is in great spirits. He's excited for how things are progressing. And he's a he's a deeply Christian man. I am myself. He feels he was put in this position for a reason. He feels that our paths crossed for a reason. And, you know, he believes that we're going to do everything that we can uh, to succeed. And that's that's what we're going to do. I know uh, a lot of people say it, but whenever whenever I hear you know Matt say that he was put in this place by God to do this, it sends tingles down my spine because I, I know for a fact he means it. Yeah. And he he believes it. I can see it in his eyes. Like yeah. he's a he's such a good guy, right? And it he's just a real salt of the earth person, which is why it's so fucked up that this is happening to him, right? This isn't like a this isn't one of those like scammy, you know, weird gun industry people that some of us would like get a little tiny bit of catharsis from this happening to this is just a like just a dude just a really right. nice dude uh, so anyway there's the big update there um yeah he got he got five years uh, of course there's um the way it works is he could he could effectively serve 85 percent of that time if he's on if his behavior is good of course we're gonna try to get him out on appeal um like while the appeal is pending there's a an appeals bond, which sometimes you can get. Um, and maybe if we get the case heard fast enough, we get him out of there much, much sooner. Uh, I don't know. Obviously, we're working tirelessly on this. Um, but the if you guys want to help, send his wife the money. His kids should not suffer from this. I mean, he shouldn't be suffering, but it's it's really fucked up what's happening to his kids. Um, not that they're like in a, in a bad situation or anything, right? They're they're being fed and everything, but I don't think that they need to have their quality of life go down at all. You know, they need to be kept fat and happy until daddy comes home. That's what I think. Uh, so moving on from there, <laughs> we had a little bit of fun as well. I know we just had an extended um, unhappy session, but Ivan and I started doing this thing when we were hanging out <laughs> where we would just do regular gunsmithing stuff and record it with the pretext that we were doing something anti-gun. <laughs> yeah, it's really good, and people fall for it. I mean, pe people fall for it hook, line, and sinker, yeah. especially if you like talk like in a dumb accent or talk talk slow or something. Right. So here's a couple examples. Yeah, you you idiots thought that you were so smart that just because you cut up a gun, you can put it together. You said you can just print it. Well, guess what? I bought acid. I'm putting the gun in the acid. Bye, gun. Bye, bye. America has too many guns. We're going to get rid of the guns by putting them in the in the gun the gun eater. And then we're going to eat them. We're going to eat the guns. Bye-bye. Bye-bye guns. Bye-bye. But the one most recently <laughs> they <laughs> really took off. It swindled a lot of people. And so, <laughs> well, here, I'll play it. You know, as a gunsmith, I work on a lot of guns like this. Nice hunting firearms that Americans depend on to take care of their families. But oftentimes I'll get asked to make adjustments, fix it up on, on other guns. And if there's one thing that I have a problem with, it's that some guys are putting silencers on their guns and I just don't think that there is any need for that. that that is just dishonest behavior and think about it you could see you could do a lot of damage to a good honest place with that so whenever I get in a gun in on adjustment and I see it's got one of these before I give it back to the customer I just go ahead and take care of it for them 
and it's just this simple. Just like that. Just like that. Make sure it can't cause any problem. And what we were doing there is it, it, it and for those of you listening on audio, I show a 22, I'm like, oh, this is a good American hunting gun. And I, I transition to say what I can't stand as a gunsmith is people who are going to put a silencer on their gun. And so with a barrel chucked in the lathe, I say, whenever I get one of these, I just take care of them. And then I just like drive a cutting tool across the threads <laughs> and just flatten it. Uh, which the reason I was doing this, which of course I don't put in the video, is because those were nine millimeter barrels that were threaded half or five ace twenty four. I was re-threading them to half twenty eight, which is what most people would want. And I posted that to Twitter, uh, and it got people like, lost their minds. Yeah, it got like a hundred thousand views. And best of all, this is another case where like people just don't contact each other; they just say nonsense. Tim from Military Arms Channel just post the video if your gunsmith did you this favor while he was working on your gun what would your response be I don't know if this guy is trolling or if he's serious but it's cringeworthy either way to which I text him saying, what the fuck so my content what yeah he's like oh wait hold on is that you I said yes <laughs> and apparently like the voice I put on really fooled, fooled people yeah, fooled them. which i don't see why <laughs> it was i was just putting on an accent <laughs> but yeah that was it was so good and like the best part was people on twitter are unwilling to like click on your profile which like you do this shit too yeah and either of us if you click on i've got it, a profile or, picture of a gun yeah and people <laughs> still fall for it <laughs> yeah, either of us if you click on our profiles it's manifest what we're about uh but they're like like i had all these people saying that what that i was getting ready for a lawsuit and i was like oh what the <laughs> irony the, it's like so i kept telling i just kept telling, saying go ahead pay your pay your lawyer fees and that you'll pay more than that gun's worth just to try and get less than that gun's worth out of me okay let's see yeah that was awesome i i really enjoyed that <laughs> Uh, anyway, next up, guys, let's get into the show proper. Sorry for the extended introduction. We have, you know, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll cut in my, my take on the, the primary arms classic red dot, which I actually like a lot, uh, right here. Is the primary arms classic series red dot the optimal red dot for your SK? Let's find out. Let's find out. It's okay. Now, what do you think of that red dot for an SKS? That's good. If I had to put a red dot on my on my training SKS, that's the one that I'd put it on. Yeah, that's my favorite SKS, by the way. It shoots really good. Yeah, they, they didn't make a lot of those, the the, the training SKSs. No, they're pretty people rare. Most people don't know about them. No, most people don't. It's like, uh, it's but it's like our secret, so it's just for, you know, don't go telling people about Please it. Please do not share this thing. Don't share this link. Uh, next up, we're going to do the... Uh, we're going to do the the typical... Let's throw some red meat at the audience. Let's see if that might give us hundreds of thousands of of uh, very unengaged subscribers. <laughs> uh, Take my protein, sir. Yeah, I. You know, what? I will. I will just say one thing. I'm not bitter about like our audience numbers because I have the best audience I've ever seen. It is pretty great. Like our, our audience, one in the Discord, they're fucking hilarious. Only like four percent of people don't get it, and thus provide meat for the rest of the audience to eat that's true um they're they're awesome on patreon they've been super supportive like i have i have great patreon conversion and 
they're just generally smart. Isn't so, it weird when you don't make bottom feeder content except for this show, which is like the bottomest of bottom feeder content? Yeah. You attract an audience of people who aren't bottom feeders. Right. So like and this show is like only arguably bottom feeder content. It's just like, you know, it kind of it happened where this is what we can do most consistently. Yeah. But I do think we provide actual insight on the stories we discuss instead of just vaguely reading the first two paragraphs. Yeah, and we're then always very angry. insightful. I mean, inciting. Insight. <laughs> <laughs> we always incite stuff. But have you noticed that? All, like, all these channels on YouTube, they just like read the first two paragraphs and then get mad. It doesn't matter what the first two paragraphs said. They just and get they mad. And they spend 10 minutes about the liberals and Obama. Yeah, Obama. So anyway, guys, you guys, Hunter Biden, years ago, I got him on the grand charge. Oh. Yeah, he's Hunter Biden is indicated on three. I love gun control now. Yeah, three federal gun charges. Listen, guys. Okay, hold on, guys. Uh, President Joe Biden's son has been charged with federal crimes related to his purchase of a revolver during a time when he was actively using crack cocaine. Special Counsel David Vice fired three counts against Hunter Biden in Delaware federal court on Thursday. Two of the felony charges are related to, to accusations of the younger Biden lied on the background check he filed out in order to purchase a Colt Cobra revolver okay, in October 2018. The third is over allegations that he continued using hard drugs for the two weeks that he owned a gun. Uh... Yeah, damn it! Yeah, that's so. That's so. Grrr. I hate the funny. liberals. I was trying. How to they get I, away with it. I started making a montage on Twitter of people whose profiles were like Molon Lobby, two ways shall not be infringed. Okay. Who were celebrating the fact that Hunter Biden was being prosecuted. Mm -hmm. And then I only found two of them, so I didn't actually get a good montage. But I was yeah, trying to do it like, a, hey, look, hey, look, idiots, hey, look, dumb, dumb morons. And of course, yes. there's there's some points that I saw that like Hunter Biden is in addition to doing this, like did a little bit of the human trafficking underage, potentially prostitute mm -hmm. allegedly thing like that was all going on here at the same time. So certainly he's not a good guy. And right. certainly, certainly, I, I, I don't think even for the tax things that some of the tax things he was doing was at the expense of the taxpayer, which is kind of messed up. Because like tax no, crimes right. kind of cool. Tax crimes at the expense of the other taxpayers. That's kind of messed up. I mean, but, uh, so, yeah, no, keeping money out of the hands of the government is God's work. Taking money from other people is Satan's work. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, but, so I'm not saying that I want him to go free for everything, but I am saying I don't I don't think the gun crime, quote unquote, crimes that he did. I don't think he should be found guilty. Well, so here's why I, this is back up out. again. This is why this is back up again. Right. So there was a sweetheart deal that he got with the prosecutors. Right. Yep. Um, super sweetheart deal. Basically, he was going to get out with just mistos. And then the judge was like, no. <laughs> and then, and then, then there was some disagreement where the judge was yeah. like. But th this means that he's not given immunity from further prosecutions for the crimes that involved failing to register as a foreign agent when right. he was taking money from Ukraine. And then his defense was like, oh, no, we got it. We got we got immunity from that. And the prosecution's like, no, you don't. <laughs> I don't think that's right. And then their whole their whole plea deal went to to hell in a handbasket. And then it was back on. Then it was back off. And then it's a very dramatic day that happened. Yeah, that's a. That's basically why they're refiled now. They have to start from scratch. And you know what? Whatever happens, it's it's going to be way less than what it would be to any of us, right? Right. Um, yeah, they, they'd have already been hung out to dry. Um, but what I think is really interesting here is the opportunity for self-assessment that it presents for pro-gun people. Yeah. So... What is like stop for a second right now, and I want you to in the cope section tell me which of these feelings is what you do. Do you relish in the fact that somebody who has profited so much from an anti gun agenda is being fed to the horrendous machine that we devote our time to fighting? Do you feel for him because you know the laws that he allegedly violated are completely unjust? Or do you think it's about darn time the laws are enforced against the bloodlines of our lizard overlord oppressors? I feel all three. <laughs> I, I was gonna say, or is it a weird mix of all of them that I makes you it, feel it, really a weird? weird? Mix of me, yeah. Yeah. If it's so, if if you say you just feel for him because you know they're unjust, like you're a saint. You know, you, do no self assessment. You're great. Like 
that's not me though i feel all of them uh and we probably shouldn't <laughs> right the, the, the first one where you know i feel i feel glad that he's getting get got because of this machine that he and or his family was is really a his, his family specifically is like mm -hmm. the, the 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 synthesis of this sort of a thing was was largely biden's crime bill back in the day right but the you the, the, i think the part that they're like the irony being even sweeter than that is all you know all across twitter the sort of big talking head anti-gun account accounts are all like nobody ever gets charged with lying on a 4473 this is targeted like these people are so unaware of how their own favorite gun laws work where i mean yeah. it, it is a small number relatively speaking well, because you have to be in a bizarre position for it to be prosecuted right it, it, it's about 300 people a year end up yeah. being I, I don't know if it was prosecuted or convicted of lying on a 4473 I, I wasn't able to clear that up but you know regardless it is it is a seemingly small number but that's because that's, that's actually they, a lot for federal prosecution right they hit you with that whenever they don't have something else to hit you with like if, if that's all that they've got you on as far as the gun crimes go because normally you know, whenever you're a felon in possession they'll go for felon in possession rather than you lied on the form right because it's easy. Felon, felon possession is way easier to yeah, prove. Yeah, it's like it's pretty much a strict liability offense. <laughs> Did he have the gun? Yeah. Okay. Case is closed. Yeah, and then you, it, it, it's, 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 it's not to get into this. Instead of did he way. lie and did he knowingly right. lie? Right. Knowingly yeah. lie usually depends on them admitting it on accident or doing something I don't know wacky or wild, like, like literally working with a plant basically right right and or, the plant is like holding your hand and be like no you know that's not true right. Or, or they they come right out and like write it in a biography or whatever. Some people would do that. It'd be crazy though if you admit to a federal crime in a biography. <laughs> <laughs> How crazy you'd have to be to do that? It'd be it's silly. Wild. It'd be a silly Billy buggy thing to do. Kind of a power uh, move though. But anyway, yeah, guys, you think about that. All right. Next up, <laughs> and you'll see this um article is really strangely formatted. I wonder if it's because somebody don't play with uh, AdWalker, you know. <laughs> But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't mind the format. California becomes the first state to call for a constitutional convention on gun control. They did uh, it. They did it. Let's let's hey. join the uh, look. Let's do the thing. Everybody else. Yay! Clap 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 clap. clap. Yeah. Yay! We've well solved it. Done. Gun safety laws work. So here's what we're gonna do. We talked about this before. Everybody join in. All of the Just states. Think, yes. All, all, Every uh, everybody who's on your states, because we probably have like ninety percent of the states' general legislatures listening to this show. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just go ahead and say yes. Just say you, yes. You, you know, early on when California was debating this, they had a you know, the, the, the Senate, I think, did it first. In California, Senate, of course, is majorly blue. Mm -hmm. And it had a lot of people on the blue side say no to this because they weren't able to determine if they can incorporate rules that limits the scope of the Constitutional Convention. Because guess what? You can't. Yeah. It's very, very specific. You can't. And so you know, they were like, no, we're not voting on this because it could potentially backfire on us. <laughs> And so, you know, of course, you know, there, there weren't enough of those holdouts to stop it. So it is right. now done in California. So now I guess other states have to now think about if they want to do this. Everyone should do this. And just it's because say yes. And just hijack say the yes. whole thing. And then once the convention is on, it, it's game time. Like, term limits and then Second Amendment Part 2. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> term limits, limitations on federal power, limit, like fiscal restraints on the federal government, like almost enough states have been trying to do for the past 30 years literally guys just gaslight your legislatures just do it <laughs> like watch the next state that does this be alabama or like idaho and california just go what's going on what what's <laughs> happening <laughs> but uh oh that'd be so big oh can you imagine if then just as a as a acidic vinegar piss they did do Second Amendment 2 electric boogaloo. <laughs> so Second Amendment 2, yeah, it means machine guns and rocket launchers and grenade launchers and actual grenades. Yeah. <laughs> and No, we're going to add some common sense safety laws in here. We are going to provide everyone with an AMX-13. <laughs> it's just like when the, the Australia did it for if you want a picture of the Queen. If you send us a nice letter, we will send you a light tank. Yep. <laughs> They did it for it would, the Taliban. I don't know why they wouldn't do it for us. It would be interesting constitutionally. Of course, I know how, I, I imagine I know how it would end up working, but 
in this amendment do something like the federal government has no power to regulate guns at all <laughs> <laughs> that, that the only the only way that guns can be regulated is through a convention of the states all of the states have to agree at once and that federal well, or government if you just let the states do it i mean i'd be kind of okay with that um there has a federal preemption that says that you can't regulate simple possession and yeah. then i think you could let the states do it yeah simple possession and you define arms as literally as broad as then what possible. you do is you also fix um you also fix the ninth and tenth amendments too so you'd be like right. oh the right of the individual to keep and bear arms as it exists um you know as <laughs> it exists in the 14th amendment and the <laughs> due process clause and the <laughs> and the privileges and immunities clause in all measures equally and the way that each and as each individual possession of each individual arm is a, <laughs> a Ninth <laughs> Amendment right. <laughs> God, just incorporate the states down to like you, you can regulate conduct only. Yeah, like if you want to make it a turbo extra crime to do a robbery with a machine gun, so you incentivize them to do it with revolvers or whatever, then okay. <laughs> yeah, no, like, and I've always actually thought that that was okay. You know, like make the immediate punishment of like doing a burglary with a a machine gun or whatever, like being loaded into a cannon and fired at a brick wall <laughs> <laughs> at a non-lethal velocity. Otherwise, like, you just fired into a, uh, a, a wall that's made out of trees or wood or something. <laughs> something yeah, something less bad. Um, or a funny, you know what a funny uh, punishment would be? Make them eat the entire clearance section of vzgrips.com <laughs> and uh, let that grippy V <laughs> let that grippy V10 alloy up. tear you to literal shreds. So yeah, good luck VZ passing Grips. one of these bad boys. Yeah, good, good luck. <laughs> it ain't coming out. And that is the the thing that we love about VZ Grips is their stuff is good and it gets stuck in your intestines <laughs> and also your hands. VZ Grips is surgery. a Florida company. There's your proof. Right there. Jackson Bluff. That's a road in Florida. And they sell stuff and they're cool people. The th I, I like the 320 texture a lot. It's like um, it's the least skateboard tapey, but it still really glues it to your hand. That's what I have on the Miku, uh, Dan Wesson, and the uh, the Big Iron. So, and yeah, the Hyena Brown is the correct color. So guys, check them out and use promotional code this week 15 That's T-H-I-S-W-E-E-K-1-5. Get yourself a set of grips. And whenever you do buy something for them, be sure to tell them, remind them that they haven't yet made AK grips. That's true. Yeah, they need to. And that, they keep, yeah. I guess they keep forgetting or something. Yeah, they keep forgetting. They, uh, just, you, need they just need more reminders, really. Yeah. grips.com. Okay, next up. Oh, man, this... The story's funny because, like, okay, so the Liberty Safe scandal, right? Oh, yeah. Let's, this, this this one got played out. Oh, it did. What is your, like, final big picture takeaway of the whole Liberty Safe scandal? Which, by the way, guys, basically, Liberty Safes, they're the safe that you see at every, like, bogus-ass gun store that decides it wants to, like, explore a new product avenue. Right, and they, they, they subcontract to everybody, so Cabela's, Bass Pro, like, everybody yeah. who's got their own brand of safe, it's all Liberty Safe. Liberty Safe is, like, every gun safe. Most of the, is it most or all of their safes that are electronic locks? Uh, I, I remember seeing a number, I think it was maybe, like, 40, 60, 60% 60 are electric, but, you know, they, they do still offer, you can, you can get the manual only, or okay. there's some that are combo. So the deal is they keep in their records, you know, a factory reset key for each safe by serial number, which makes sense because like these things are in Cabela's and like kids get lost in them. <laughs> <laughs> right? And the thing that doesn't make sense though is basically if the cops ask them for your key, they just give it to them. Like they right. didn't wait for a subpoena, they didn't like they just say, oh, "Okay, you know, there was a guy who did a notable January six, and the the FBI had was was in the process of getting a warrant, and so they went and went to Liberty Safe and said, "We know that he's got one of your safes. We want the code to get into it. We're in the process of getting a warrant." And Liberty Safe 
gave them the code and yeah. they didn't end up getting the warrant but the warrant was for searching the address the warrant wasn't a subpoena from liberty safe saying yeah. you have to turn this over so right. liberty safe like went above and beyond to comply with the fbi you know really they could have just told them get fucked they would have been fine and in no legal danger right there's no there's no they're not sticking their necks out at all if they just say uh we don't know what a code is right and it's that's really stupid and then like just keep going like no hable espanol yeah no so this is at the first they said liberty safe was contacted by the fbi requesting the access code to the safe of an individual for whom they had a warrant to search their property our company protocol protocol is to provide access codes to law enforcement if a warrant grants them access to a property why um after receiving the request we received proof of the valid warrant and only then did we provide them with an access rope code Liberty Safe had no knowledge of any of the details surrounding the investigation at the time, which is like even more damning. Yeah, that's that's not. I wouldn't say that. Actually. It's like literally, we didn't check. <laughs> we don't know what it's about. We just like give them access codes, or whatever. Yeah. So then everybody got big mad at them, and with justifiably so. And so they're like, "Oh, we're changing. We're better now, guys. Look, if you email us, we'll maybe delete your code from the thing." Which, I mean, we'll, step in the right direction, but that should have been the policy from the get-go. Yeah, and the thing I love about this is, uh... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's it's like they were like, oh, and also like we'll we'll wait till we get a subpoena from now on, which again should have been the policy forever. Yep. Uh, but you know, people are saying it's going to be really hard to earn their trust back. It's going to be really hard to earn their trust back. I think there's two ways for them to earn their trust back. One of them I won't talk about on the show. Um, <laughs> Two, I want them to answer this question, <laughs> which is, hey, Liberty Safes, I'll give you three trust points right now if you tell us exactly how many times you handed codes to the cops. <laughs> and <laughs> they're, they're just ignoring me. So I would like you guys to harangue Liberty Safes and find, like, they need to tell us this. Just because... One, I think it would be really funny if we made them. Uh, two, I think it would be really funny if we made them do this. <laughs> so, but, I made a little meme in response to this whole thing where it was uh, the Virgin uses a gun safe versus the Chad. It's a basement gun dungeon <laughs> <laughs> where it's like, yeah, the, the guy who uses the safe, he stores his ammo and his guns in a separate safe. And then, and then the gun dungeon guy, he stores his guns underneath his ammo pile. Right. It's like they're all in one great big pyramid heap. <laughs> it's very dangerous. Yeah, they, I, th I don't remember where I posted somewhere on Twitter that uh, this is just proof that the only secure way to store your firearms is in a booby-trapped swamp. <laughs> the, uh, you know, the, the thing that gets me about it is, you know, like growing up or whatever, there were like gun safes, but they were really just like old fridges that they sort of, you know, we, we'd weld a padlock onto or whatever, right. like, you know, weld a hinge that you could padlock shut. And then you know, the you know, the thinking was, if somebody breaks into your house, you knowing that you, you know, they're there to get guns or whatever, if you put them in a safe and you they're determined enough to break into a house and get guns, them having a stair climber or whatever for a safe isn't really going to stop them and the only way you're going to stop them from moving the safe then is you lag bolt it into the concrete and then you put nuts on top of those lag bolts and then you weld the nuts to the bolts and yeah. even then you're only slowing them down 30 minutes so if your concern is like i'm on vacation and want a safe place to store them dude they're taking all of your shit and you're going to speed them up in the long run by not just having them scattered right yeah so because they, then once they get it take. like guess what they're really not that heavy and so like, like I, if it's I, I three guys they can move it Right. Uh, like, there are places where it's like required or stipulated by law in some instances, and, and in which case I'm like, okay, yeah, I guess I get it then. But really, the only other instance where I can see anyone's argument being clear is like preventing access to children. But you don't need a, yeah. a steel vault door. You know, it's got all of these all these locks that people will end up you know cutting through or just stealing the whole safe anyway. There's there's better, safer, smarter, cheaper ways to keep guns out of. So I will say things. I do have gun safes, but it's because I want to have kids and it's like, well, I may as well I just have this. Uh, the real thing to do if you're a gun collector is get insurance. Like, <laughs> that's, the, that's the real way to get peace of mind because there's no way to really stop them if they really want to. Right. If, if they're there to steal your guns, especially if you're not home 
uh, yeah. an alarm system, security camera system is going to do you so much more good than a safe ever possibly could. But the best thing is insurance. Insurance would be important. Then. Insurance is the best. Like that's, that's your that's all else has failed. You you have insurance. You, over time, you'll get them. You'll get them back. Or honestly, fairly quickly, you'll get them back because they're usually really bad about what they do with them once they steal them. Right. Um, they usually go straight to pawn shops. <laughs> Just, <whoa. laughs> uh, who take your finger anyway? Uh, let's let's move on here. So yeah, so, but my takeaway from the Liberty Save thing is electronic saves are stupid. Yeah, that, that, that that's another good point. Is because the really? like the thing is they're really electromechanically simple, and right. some of the like, especially the cheaper ones, have a plastic fascia. You can just hit it with a hammer, and then just energize the solenoid and open the safe. <laughs> like it's. Who cares at that point that they have a code somewhere if a hammer and well, of course then the question being is like how intelligent is the person um, who's stealing your guns probably not intelligent enough to figure that out. Right. But I, I, I guess I guess there, there's the one guy to stop it. It would try, it would stop a crack zombie who's just looking for something to pick up and leave. Yeah. But like so would leaving like a little trail of Xbox cables or whatever to your Xbox <laughs> and they're just like yes yes and then they're <laughs> then they're on their way out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Score. Yeah. Yeah. That's just put Xboxes like ten feet ahead of wherever your guns are. Yeah. Like, like right. some people are saying like landmines or whatever. You don't need that. Just scare out. You you can just give them an Xbox and then they'll be on their way. Yeah, and it's really easy to get broken ones on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> get a broken Xbox and leave it out for crackhead <laughs> I'm gonna do that. That's like, that sounds like a good idea. Just leave it there right in front of your door. Every every night before you go to sleep, just leave your crackhead Santa gift out. Yeah. <laughs> What's that, Daddy? <laughs> That's for crack claws, <laughs> just in case. Uh, Hunter Hunter Biden claws. <laughs> All right, next up, Tenth Circuit. This is infuriating. So yeah, this is, uh, interesting. Yeah, we've deepened a circuit split. We're the Tenth Circuit had a felon in possession case, and they decided that, well, you don't have to apply Bruin, which is, you know, applying the text history and tradition test, you know, the test that the Supreme Court in Bruin said, if it implicates the ability to keep and bear arms at all, you must apply this test. Yeah. Because the Bruin decision didn't really, like, talk about that. Didn't talk specifically about felon in possession laws the you sort of the interesting it. thing here is that the uh you, because we've got a deepening circuit split here it increases the chance that the supreme supreme court will take interest in this right. sort of the you know, the, the legal minefield to watch out for is they're hearing rahimi uh, soon i think they're hearing rahimi in november right. which is the one where it's like a very big bad guy who was a felon in possession had right. one aspect of the charges against him thrown out uh, on using the Bruin. Well, that test. wasn't that wasn't Rahimi isn't about FIP. Rahimi is about right, um, right. The domestic, domestic violence, domestic restraining, violence order. restraining order. Right. So, but so not, the no. logic of the Tenth Circuit is that Bruin didn't overturn previous circuit. Like it's it's kind of ridiculous. It's super circuit. Uh, it's super circuit circular. Um, right. So this is. This is the quote from that, right? So here's the quote. In Bruin itself, the Supreme Court didn't address the ban on felons' possession of firearms. The court instead addressed the constitutionality of New York licensing scheme. It applied a whole new test. I'm sorry, but where do these bullet points come from? Nothing in its opinion should be taken to cast down a long state provision on the possession of firearms by felons. Well, is that? That's not what. That's, that's Kavanaugh's. Kavanaugh's concurrence, I think, but he he that th- that was in the context of like you know, the the the, the, the individual you know, the, right the, the 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 dangerous prohibition sort of thing. So like the court, the Supreme Court said every time you see a gun law, you have to do this test, and now the Tenth Circuit is saying, 
Well, because they didn't overturn it, we get to avoid the test. I think it's almost fortuitous. I think it's, I think it's almost, I mean, I I don't know, I don't know much about this case or the guy who's strung up in the middle of it. So it's probably not fortuitous for him because this is stupid, but in the long run, it's probably fortuitous that the 10th circuit gets it this wrong. Like they aggressively got it wrong. Right. Not, not like in the, in in the application of the test and in the outcome. And so, especially the, the, the sister case to this in another circuit is, is range V Garland. Yeah. And that was one where I forget which circuit it was, but they found that a guy who was a you know, nonviolent felon uh, you know, does have Second Amendment rights, whereas right. here in the 10th, they're now saying a nonviolent felon doesn't have Second Amendment rights. So this, so this will be... Make sense. You know, here, in preserving shall issue regimes and related background checks, the court arguably implied that it was constitutional to deny firearms licenses to individuals with felony convictions. Uh, yeah, but... Uh, like like one, one one sentence one blurb from a concurrence isn't the test <laughs> right like the, the test that bruin laid out wasn't what did kavanaugh say out of context <laughs> if it did we'd be fucked hey, let's say one second to just look at this this is so intensely contrived like literally, here's the heading from the 10th Circuit. The Supreme Court hasn't expressly abrogated our precedent on the constitutionality on the federal ban. They abrogated they, all they, precedent. They have. They very specifically have. They've laid out. And a then they literally test. start with. No, wait, look. They literally start with a two part test. <laughs> we you must guys are being the scope of the second <laughs> we must consider the scope of the Second Amendment. Bruin answered that. It Bruh. answered it really clear. Yeah, at least, so, like, at least so far as this challenge is concerned, it answered it crystal clear. You know, in 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 assault weapons cases, they'll they'll argue about what is and isn't an arm, which is just so. Insane. And then it's they're stupid. talking about well, they're what they're quoting here is Heller. Nothing in Heller should be taken to cast out on longstanding prohibitions, blah blah blah, which was BS language that they put in to satisfy a judge that we no longer have. It, like Bruin. Apply, gave a test so that you can come to conclusions that would be supported like Heller was. It doesn't require that every single sub facet and every piece of dicta of Heller apply to your case. Right. Especially when you consider you know, long-standing tradition yeah. is something that Bruin tells, right? Bruin tells you how you analyze this. It's how and why. Yeah. If you look at what a long-standing felon prohibition was it was people who you know, murdered people, sedition, working with the English government, yeah. you, <laughs> being British, <laughs> being yeah. British in general, like the, the, the absolute worst crimes imaginable. Yeah, like crimes literally against humanity itself. unforgivable <laughs> crimes. Not not stuff like you. Know, these days, you can become a felon for like you know, you know, jaywalking jay in some instances, getting jay- wood, with, wood pulp from right. a questionable source. And jaywalking in with aggregating factors or yeah. all, like all manner of insane stuff destroying like debasing u.s currency with the intention of uh destroying its monetary value doing an american thing like pouring your waste motor oil on your driveway to kill the weeds <laughs> <laughs> i can't believe they took that from us you do if, if you're if you're an american they'll make you a felon it's horrible yeah it's I mean, pretty much. We're, we're like uh, one step away from it. If, if your steak isn't well done, then you're a felon. They're going to do I it think next. That's a bridge too far. <laughs> They're going to. But, uh, but anyway, let's let's move on because we got a lot more stories. But yeah, that's BS. So let's talk. About, we talked about the Tenth Circuit. Let's take a little breather now. <sighs> Sorry for breathing in the mic, guys. Let's take a breather and talk about the Ninth Circuit. <laughs> Although. <laughs> The Ninth Circuit did something right. They did an okay. Uh, do you guys remember how all of a sudden one day every single site that sells any gun part started uh, like having a little splash page asking if you were 18? Well, that was of course because California and the Ninth Circuit just ruled against it. So that's, that's pretty big. Uh, yeah, they ruled Wednesday. There's no evidence that the ban on firearms advertisements allegedly aimed at minors, which was absurd, would achieve its purported goal of reducing illegal gun use and violence among young people. (laughs) 
uh, three judge panel of the appellate court on Wednesday overruled the lower court judge who had declined to issue a preliminary injunction against enforcement of the statute in a lawsuit brought by junior sports magazines um, and a, a series of gun rights groups. This, <laughs> and I love this guy, you know who this guy is, right? <laughs> yeah, it's well, Gavin Newsom. It's Gavin Newsom, but do you know who the, the do you know what the um, logo behind him is? It's the is we won tactical. It's the the, the yeah. little tw twenty. It's a sing, it's a twenty two long rifle AR that's got a bunch of safety locks, like added safety locks, including a lock where you can disable the entire gun using a key. Yeah, and it comes with a one round magazine, a one singular one round, not just one yeah. magazine. It comes with one one round magazine. Yeah, so like that's one of the only companies that like you could actually imagine like is intentionally advertising a kid gun like right. and that and like there, cricket? there are right there are a couple like savage has a youth model browning right. has youth models and but that's something that has well, existed <laughs> I, I saw somebody was doing some analysis and they're like you, you you can trace back to the right around the 1900s winchester was making youth advertised model guns this yeah. is not something that's new it's not novel it's right. not the reason that kids end up sometimes getting hurt and or killed with firearms I'm it's not it's not it's not more attractive now than it was then right because back then they were like buy this you know kids buy these because in some you know, probably back then kids could buy guns actually i have a buddy <laughs> i have a really good buddy who's a shooting friend of mine and he is old <laughs> and he brought out He's um, his Sears twenty two self loader, and he, and it's in beautiful shape. <laughs> and he told me about how he went to Sears with five dollars on his bicycle and bought that gun at twelve years old. I was, I was about to say I know for a fact I've heard stories of people who are like you teenage. You know, guys back then buying guns from your Sears or Ace Hardware or whatever, you know, your home improvement sort of stores would sell little 22s for kids. Yeah, and he still has it. I think that is so cool. It is It is certainly very cool, but like you know, the California's whole notion here is just insane. Right. It's it's facially obvious what these laws are meant to do is, you know, choke the... You know, it's another one of their "quote unquote" clever ways. It's content based. And, it's content based speech right. restriction. That's all it they're is. They're trying. They're trying to strangle strangle out the gun industry itself by yeah. using little. Oh, oh, we're so clever. We're gonna stop you from advertising because oh, maybe a kid could see it. Right. And the you know the crap thing is, I know Illinois has copied this law now. I think New York has also done it. No, and I know there's a. Is it Massachusetts? A it's one of them. It was Massachusetts. Yeah. There's a couple. There's a couple other states that are also looking at. You're doing the same thing where it's like we have to keep the kids safe by banning something that's existed for a hundred. This is literally sophist trouble. gamesmanship. It's so disgusting. And, and like, of course, it, it's. It, I mean, again, like I said, it's totally obvious what they're doing. They're just trying to strangle obvious. the gun industry. Yeah, it's. It, they're literally putting little landmines, little gotchas, where they can weaponize their state attorneys general to yep. just harangue the gun industry, and that's why. So that's why this is a First Amendment case, and. Why the Ninth Circuit observed, like, look, this is viewpoint-based discrimination. That's obvious. Uh, the so, interesting thing to see if this ends up being taken on bonk, because the Ninth Circuit, yeah. Ninth Circuit on bonk, hasn't let a you know, pro-gun decision stand. I don't think ever. Well, but it, remember, it's a First Amendment case, right? I suppose that's true. Yeah, it's a pro-gun affecting case they haven't i mean they haven't let anything slide the thing is ever. is that it is commercial speech so the ninth circuit also hates that right so it's it's because guys remember i don't know if all of you know this but there's for no reason by the way the supreme court made it up uh there's two different first amendments there's a one for if you're not making any money and one for if you're making money so <laughs> And, and the, the, this, you know, people talk about like rogue Supreme Court inventing stuff. The, the more you research about that decision, it was actually just invented out of thin air. They were just like, eh, seems like a good idea. Seems they, like something we should they, have. You, they wanted to save the law. Yeah. That's all it was. Uh, which is bullshit. Anyway, speaking of, let's talk about something that's not bullshit. It's MathCorp back on their bullshit. Hey. So, yeah, MathCorp guys. The Chime sellers 
guys, there is big updates. M11 chimes back in stock. The Amigo Verde. This is a <gasps> big deal. Sent me L-based wind chime kit. It's in stock. Got to pick it up. Super recommended. And Mr. Pistol Kawaii Edition. Back around. God, the K is so good. I don't think people understand that. And look, I'm a guy. I'm a guy who loves me some long barrels, and I understand that, especially when it comes yeah, to like like ideal chew barrel length or whatever. Yeah, they're good to chew, but I like ideal barrel lengths or whatever. I harp on it all the time. I, I will say the one time that I I can just like principally break this is with the MP5 because the K is so good. I haven't tried one. I'm gonna have to try one. Uh, it's so good. We. We have one Blem unit that I think I'll take and mess with. But, yeah. uh, guys, there's new merch as well. We got the, the new edition of the Staff Church shirt uh, with the new logo. It's very nice. We also got, by popular request, the, uh, I'll call it the Back of Furthoffen <laughs> t-shirt. <laughs> Which would be a good color with that. Probably, I like Heather Gray in a shirt like that. That, that makes a statement, and it makes it well. So guys, maf-arms.com and use promotional code FRN. That's Foxtrot Romeo November. Check them out. Give money. Money, please. <laughs> Give money. So, oh my god, this New Mexico thing. And of course, this all unfolded while we had to take a little break. Um, yeah. But so, thousand foot view, if you guys haven't heard about it. New Mexico's government. <laughs> if you haven't heard about it, <laughs> yeah. well, some people have. Uh, uh, oh man, I don't know how. how New how, Mexico you... Governor Michelle Luan Grijan decided that it would be a good idea to do an emergency ban on carrying firearms at all in the largest county of the state. This, <laughs> like. This led to the wildest kerfuffle because you would think that they would like crazy. They'd put up like a, a concerted fight. Well, again, in a week's time, she attempts to emergency emergently ban carriage of firearms in the largest county of the state. Bunch of lawsuits get filed. Her own attorney general refuses to defend them. County officials have refused to enforce it. Literally, David Hogg says it's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> like actually David Hogg says it's a bad idea. There was a lot of memes about that that were pretty good. Um but her position which if you're going to talk about electability if David Hogg is telling you to knock it off she Yikes, is, you're uh, you're out there. Yeah, she's sitting there saying, "I can't believe they're trying to prevent me from protecting my state. I will not stop and I'm going to keep going." It's like, "All right, Idiot. <laughs> Did you listen to the oral arguments at all? No, I didn't. Is there a you know, the lawyer defending the thing got like super flustered and he started yelling at the judge? Wait, really? <laughs> was, like, like raising his voice just because he was like, like you could tell he was he was getting he was getting steamed on. Like, yeah. it's, it's like he starts like getting really passionate about like, uh, oh, we're gonna save lives. Ah, we're just trying to save lives. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't it violate the Second Amendment because it's temporary. <laughs> like, dude, just what is it that's axiomatic about deprivations of fundamental rights? That even for a moment, right? Like, and the government yeah. can't seem to remember that. Like in all of these gun cases, they keep saying, "Oh, well, it's not a permanent deprivation." It's okay, retard. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally. So you admit it's a deprivation? No. <laughs> or but God, so, the, the, who did they get uh, to defend it? I mean. Like was it just some JV player in the in the uh, state attorney's I, I office? I don't even know, but you know, it, it must must have been one of like the, the, the like they referred to it as her lawyer. So I don't know if like I don't know exactly how that worked out, but oh man, you know, it certainly wasn't the state's lawyer because the state's lawyer was like, eh, uh. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> Maybe if it was an appointed counsel, like, can you imagine you're on the wheel and you just get. <laughs> <laughs> you get called up. We need you at the courthouse to do a hearing real quick. <laughs> so like, uh. <laughs> oh man, uh, that's you, so. Like, I'm guessing the judge chewed on him really hard. It was. It wasn't. It wasn't great. Where the, you know, the, the judge was like, you know, it, it. It seemed like very, very clear in advance how that was going to go, and I believe that the TRO has come down since. Yeah, the TRO was issued on Wednesday. 
yep. the uh, you know the, the governor herself had an interesting interaction with Ted Liu, who's a U.S. Congress lizard who is ve- rather anti-gun, mm-hmm. but it had said like this violates the Second Amendment because <laughs> you can't do that. And then this lady, the governor, on Twitter says, actually. Concealed and open carry are state laws, and I control those. <laughs> like, oh my <laughs> god, how are you this? How are you this constitutionally inept? We had a war. We had a whole big war about whether or not you can say that. And, you, <laughs> and, and, and guess which side won? Well, let's not get into that. Uh, but yeah, no. So on Twitter, uh, yeah, she's today a judge temporarily, temporarily blocked sections of our public health order, but recognized the significant problem of gun violence in this state. Oh yeah, the little carrot she gave you and said, "I get it. You're trying." Um, I refuse to be resigned to the status quo, and I will never stop fighting to prevent other families from enduring these tragedies. Like I refuse to be resigned to the status quo. That's a great way to wind up paying attorney's fees, lady. Yep. Like, God, that's so... <laughs> I did this on purpose. This is really something else. <laughs> yeah, like, hold on. It was interesting. Even Ryan Bussy. Look, even yeah. the big Bussy boy says suspending concealed carry permits is a bad idea, will not solve anything, may make things worse, is a sort of knee-jerk that only fosters distrust. <laughs> oh we man. got we got well we we got we got a whole we got a whole data dump on Bussy coming up though. Oh yeah, Mr. Buss. He's uh he's done it again. <laughs> this is worth I mean we won't really get into this. Um of course every town backs politic lizards all the time. This time they did one who's a bit of an auteur and, you know, Politico has an opinion, you know, so what if she uh, live streamed sex acts with her husband, including, you know, uh, toilet related ones? Uh, it doesn't really matter. So that's fine. Uh, well, we're just going to move on for that. Um, I think that plays plays well into the next story, which is ex every town employee working there was like being in an abusive relationship. Uh, and I do want to read some of her quote just because it's good. Uh, you know, but all right, I'll just read this. Working at every town is similar to being in an abusive relationship. I do not take that statement lightly. I have experienced my fair share of abusive and manipulative relationships, and I previously worked for a domestic violence and sexual assault crisis center. Every town has an organization, and every town's management really meet all the criteria. <laughs> On the outside, white people love every town. Every town has carefully created a brand of gun violence prevention that gun owners and non-gun owners want to stand beside. Citation required. Under the guise of protect the children. When you tell others where you work, you might hear comments like, thank you for doing this important work. But on the inside, it's a nightmare. I believe the folks who have positive things to say about the organization at this point are either A, a part of the problem, or B, leave before they take off their rose-colored glasses. Similar to an abusive relationship, at first, every town is appealing. Great benefits, pays more than most nonprofits, work-sponsored travel, free branded swag. Use of the word team so often heard that you really believe for a moment that you're in a warm and welcoming work environment that cares about ending gun violence and your well-being. All the warm and fuzzies until little by little, things change. And so this gets into your little, like, usual, like, bullshit. Um, how it's clicky, how they they don't actually try to accomplish anything. Uh, how you're treated is based on, like, who's your manager, who's in your department. Uh, take a look at it if you're interested. But I will honestly say, there's some pro-gun organizations that are just like that on the inside. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say is, you know, that seems awfully, like, it's, it's almost like multi-level marketing, but for advocacy. And yeah. then I was like, oh, wait, I've made that comparison before. I'm not going to say who I made it about, but it was a pro-gun advocacy group, so... I hate them so much. <laughs> um, I think I, I, my, I, my running theory, and I think we were of one mind on this, yeah. it's because nonprofits tend to attract the sort of people who foster this environment. Right. Where it's like, it just takes like a different sort of mind to, to, to you know, helm that ship. Yeah. And then by the time you're helming that ship, it just like invariably turns into like, like just like this weird clicky, like the cult of from, personality from, from the inside, yeah. right right the cult, cult of personality certainly from the inside looking out you wouldn't actually be able to tell what your central advocacy is anymore right yeah it's 
pleasing this one individual. Right. Who, like, what, what what does my job do on a daily yeah. basis? Does does that move the ball on gun fighting gun control one way or the other? Yeah. The, the, that way down the field. And or is it to personally enrich one fucking asshole who doesn't even own any guns? Anyway, uh, move on. <laughs> For Patriots. Look, there's the power, the, the grid. You got a national preparedness month. Uh, you got a phone. Not for long. Not if the APIT projectile hits the, the area just behind the cooling vent and causes a coolant leak. That's um, true. You could get, for free, Patriot Power CX orders over 400 ballers. Like, it's great. Well, you know, guys, I recommend the seeds. You, they, they have food, but you should be planting seeds. Oh, actually, that's a good idea, too. Water, uh, water filtration. Things. Yeah. Oh, let me look at that. It's adopted by the U.S. military. That's terrifying, but it might actually be good. <laughs> uh, oh, look, it's not expensive. You might want to try that out. The Patriot Pure. And guys, if you use promotional code FRN, Foxtrot Romeo November, you're going to get 10% off. I think you should try the filter or the seeds. You know, I put a water filter in my hot tub, but the water till still tastes funny. <laughs> Um, it, have you tried seasoning? <laughs> yeah, it's got these little salts that you're supposed to put in the in the little in the little in the little thing that puts more bromine in there. There's the one that does the salts too, and it still tastes bad. I love bro salts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try putting bluing salts in there next time on the <laughs> to, see what, just to see what happens. Yeah, whatever. Fuck it. I mean, that's... It's, it's like tanning salts or whatever the whatever the females. Yeah, it's do, good so. for guns, right? Yeah, so it should good be for good guns. For good for me. Good for guns. Good for thing. me. Yeah, what's good for the gun is good for the goose gander. <laughs> um, so you know that company, uh, Wyndham Weaponry. Yep. The not notable AR-15 purveyor with a tangential relationship to the old Bushmaster company from Maine. Yeah, everybody left Bushmaster and then made this company, and then what happened? Well, they turned it off. Oh well, that happened. Went out of business. Couldn't meet the loan obligation. Anyway, all right, uh, moving on. <laughs> I would share, this is where I'd share my good story about owning a, shooting a Wyndham AR, but I think I've held one once. It felt like a PSA, whatever. I shot one. It was in 450 Shrub Master. That's nice. I kind of enjoyed it, and it had the bird's beak grip. It was, it hurt. It's nice. Yeah, it was good. Uh, so, Guys, this next product announcement is just real. First look, Taurus Judge Home Defender. All right, and when you hear that, what do you imagine it looks like? Uh, I don't know, but I imagine it's pointed at me and I'm holding it. Tauruses <laughs> <laughs> are used for that a lot. Um <laughs> So there, yeah, there's their idea. Oh my God. That's their big idea. That's how you're going to home defend. Get out of my house. You'll never hurt my kids again. <laughs> Loved by some, reviled by others. The fact of the matter is that the Taurus Judge is very popular. Five-shot revolver chambered for 410 and 45. Colt. Long Colt is not a thing. Uh, the Judge has been offered in several configurations, blah, blah, blah. Now Taurus is adding one more model to the lineup in the form of the Judge Home Defender. <laughs> How much does it differ from past iterations? Not by much. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> but, but the new features that it does have will make it a radically more effective home defense option? How much were you paid to say that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, gun Digest? Not much. Uh... God, look at it. Because you can get a second hand on the gun up front. I don't think that's going to make it more effective. It's it's yeah. I think I think if you hold Is it because of the hands, rail. <laughs> I, oh my god! At the expense of sights. It, oh my so god! I I think if you hold two hands, if you hold a a thirteen inch four ten with two hands, I think it's still four ten. I might be wrong. This gun was really only viable for one thing, and that was making sure they don't take you alive, and they're just trying to make that harder here. <laughs> it was okay, no. So I have two, and I love them very much, Thunder Fives, which is the predecessor. Um, 
and they are great snake uh, snake getters. I think they do have a tighter. You know, they're, they're rifled barrels, and they're still tighter choked. I have a one of those Kimmel single shots, four tens break action, mm-hmm. and uh, that thing. You know, I've shot your Thunder Five at at the. Like, I guess I think they were either twenty five or fifty yard range. Forty there. yards. 40 yards. So you, we were able to hit soda cans at 40 yards with that. Yeah. With the Kimmel 410, you can aim straight at a soda can. And I'm talking like 10 yards away and you'll put two pellets in it. <laughs> and this is with birdshot. I mean, it is completely yeah. ineffective. Yeah. So to, I guess the nice thing about the Thunder 5 is it's either choked or just a more constrictive bore than 410 usually has. And it's much better flight control as a result. Well, the bore is cast stainless. So yeah. God knows which one it is. And cast integral to the frame, which is yeah. just a it's just a, a feat of manufacturing engineering. The rifling is cast in cast, place. Yeah. So, so good. I, uh, I will tell you one thing though: it will not stabilize a forty-five Colt. <laughs> it will not. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So I just I see no purpose for this stupid thing. I and seven hundred and twenty-nine dollars. If it was seventy-two dollars, I'd buy it. If it was a hundred and fifty dollars, uh, I would have to really convince myself to buy it. If it came with a nice picture of a of a penguin that was giving you a thumbs up with its flipper that said like "Viva Brazil," I'll tell you how I would pay three hundred dollars for this. If it was used, like not the particular one, but a similar one was used in a high profile. A dumpster defense <laughs> incident. I would buy one. <laughs> That's a hundred percent. I'd pay three hundred dollars if it had a two hundred ninety dollar optic on top. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's the thing. This is just absurd. And you know what's the best part? They're gonna make money on it. Oh my god! <laughs> now, product improvement idea. You get okay. one of those. You get one of those. Uh, you male or rather female to female pick rail adapters, and then you mm-hmm. join. You join. You Siamese these things together. <laughs> Wait, and you do them like that. Yeah. <laughs> the handlebars. <laughs> okay, it's that would gun be for good. bikers. Yeah. No, but you have to you have to Siamese them and then have a third trigger with an even worse pull on the bottom. Yes. That just sets them both, both out. <laughs> out of both barrels. <laughs> oh god, that's good. All right, next up guys, we've got a <laughs> Ryan Bussy. Yeah, Mr. Bussy boy. Former uh, firearms executive, right? That's his big thing. Mm. Was It was Kimber. Right? It was Kimber, and he was just like a... I, I think he was a marketing guy. So, like... He's, yeah, he's, at Kimber. Like, first off, firearms executive doesn't mean... Like, okay, yeah, you're yes. in the firearms industry, but you're in the... You're in the... You're in, like, the white-collar side of the firearms industry. Yeah. Not the... Not the cool side of the firearms industry. Like, Not the funny lathe turny thread right. removing. People side. think firearms industry and they're thinking like they're thinking something different than what this guy was. Yeah. Like, and also this, like, this guy's I mean, like firearms industry, like Wayne Louis Lapierre's firearms industry. Yeah, because Kimber is like what when has their product lineup ever changed? It like I mean, they, the they, CNC they machines really add like one or two new guns, but at the time that he was there, like they just made 1911s and bolt guns that exploded. So yes. <laughs> Oh, the high country. <laughs> um, they, yeah. So he would have been like a lifestyle marketing type guy. Um, yes, at eight, making sure they were in every NRA magazine with the full yeah. page ad. Like, ooh, this is a high at a gun. Yankee New York nineteen eleven purveyor. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, the former firearms executive Bussy seeks Democratic nomination for Montana governor. That, it's that. Uh, so, so so here's here's why I thought it was interesting that he was saying what this lady was doing with her concealed carry ban was too much. Right. So if you guys he's remember he's, he's referring back to just in case they skipped around he's referring back to uh the New Mexico emergency carry ban. He said that that was too much and Ivan thinks that was ironic because so the, the, you know this this guy's in the past, we've talked about he's been an expert witness for anti-gun groups for some time, and on you know multiple assault weapons and magazine ban cases, he said like nobody needs to assault weapons, nobody needs to high cap magazines. They're just not for you know, not for hunting. That's not for sporting. And he said that he said that you should use a 
300 Winchester Magnum bolt action rifle that comes factory equipped <laughs> with a 9 to 24 scope. That's a good home defense option, he said. Instead of an AR 15, what you need is a 300 Win Mag with a 9 to 24. I think that's much, a home defense option. That's much more reasonable. <laughs> you want to see them up close when you see what's left of them go flying. <laughs> So yeah, he, he's he's had all sorts of these 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 court briefs, right? Where he gets paid by you know, the the you know, the the defense team. So in this case, the states passing these awful laws. He gets paid right. by them to tell the court why. Oh, you don't need an AR-15 for home defense. Just buy a 300 Win Mag. Right, because or, of all of the like legal significance that has. Right, and and so the the funny thing is is. Since he's gone and defended all of these bans as being entirely valid, they don't violate the Second Amendment, and also you don't need these guns. Since he's made this campaign announcement, he said that he opposes assault weapons bans, which is very weird because two months ago you were very, very strongly in support of them. That's, that's just a strange change. I think it just proves that he has the chops to be a political lizard. I, I do too, and see, that, that, that was my take on Twitter, is that I, I, I noticed in his ad that he had a Remington 870 Wingmaster, which in the great state of Illinois is a high-capacity magazine. Right. Which may seem strange because that's a shotgun, not a magazine. But you, if you bear with me, if you go and read through the, the law, uh, it's more clear than not that Illinois would ban an 870 as being a high-capacity magazine on its own. Right. Even though it's permanently attached to the receiver. And that well, he's it has threads. Right, because it's well, it's in the, on the receiver side. It's just brazed in, and then it's threaded on the end of the magazine tube, which makes it readily converted to it contain yep. ten rounds, which makes it a high capacity magazine on its own, which is just goofy. But Mr. Ryan Bussey testified in support of Illinois' ban on the high capacity magazine, saying you don't need them for hunting. You no, there's no good. You don't need that for home defense. Don't need none of that. And then in his campaign ad, he hands one to his child who we know because his child's also involved in a different court case is underage. So <laughs> the, the whole thing just beggars belief and the, you know, of course I'm not, I'm not agreeing with Illinois law by any stretch, nor am I saying that what he did by handing the gun to the kid is wrong. In fact, that's, that's fine and normal. Mm -hmm. It's just ironic to me that, you know, in Illinois, he's happy to say nobody should have that. There's no, there's no, no use for that. And then his campaign ad, he's like, eh, give it to my kid, whatever. Like, <laughs> Here, the, yeah. the dude is just so wildly inconsistent. And, you know, of course, there was a bunch of uh, anti-gun people who were like, so, no, that's just a shotgun. That's not banned. And I had to explain to them, like, you don't know how your own laws work. That's not good. And so, you know, my, my end conclusion with many of these people was, Look, all I'm saying is this guy's wildly inconsistent, and right. his views depend on who he's talking to. He's perfectly cut out to be a politician. He's cut from whole cloth in that regard. <laughs> like, this dude is as fake as can possibly be. Right. And that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish him luck, and I hope he has lots of fun. <sighs> So. <laughs> giving his high capacity magazines to children or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, enjoy yourself, dude. Uh, last up, guys. It's Patriot Patch Company. Listen, they've been a long time show supporter. They got custom design patches, apparel, and accessories for any freedom loving individual. You join the Patch of the Month Club every month. You're gonna get a little endorphin ducky on here, as we see. <laughs> we we talked last time about all the different guns that are that are shown in here. Uh, Look, they look good. They're really well made, and it just feels good to get them in the get them in the mail. I promise you that much. If you buy something, use promotional code Twig10. That's T W I G ten, and that's PatriotPatch.co. They are a good company. They're good people, and if you're into patches, you should purchase it from them. All right, guys, that's everything. Uh, stay tuned because right after you see this, there will be a new review on Fud Blasters. So, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope you guys go and leave a lot of comments about how wrong we are, because yeah. it only means that we're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. As always, we will see you next time. Bye-bye, bye-bye. I need more bullets. <laughs> <laughs>